Hi, everybody, and welcome to the final round of the Wood Green Invitational, uh, where things are hotting up and it's a, an extremely hot day. So uh, we're going to go straight in to the chess. Um, and we are going to start with this game, um, Connor Murphy against David Fitzsimmons, um, because there is um, a norm chance available in this game. We understand that um, if David were to win this game, he gets his GM norm. That's right, which is would be quite an achievement. It's a pretty tough field, I think, to make a GM norm in this tournament, I mean. Yep. Be very impressed if he does this, and as far as I could see, he's emerging from the opening with the sort of position you would want if you're trying to play for a win. There's there's chances. Let's yeah. take a look at how it happened. Yes, it was an Alakind defence, wasn't it? <laughs> yep, indeed. It's also fun. Uh, it is. I mean, I don't know whether this is something he does or something he does when he when he when a draw is not okay. Um, but anyway, I it, think it's something he does. Yeah, wasn't it? Didn't um, wasn't. Paul Dargan, he was saying in the chat the other day, he's made kind of videos on. Um, was that oh, that was Alakines, wasn't it? That he made. Ah, okay. Yes. Um, so I think he does it, but but I was just looking at this line, and his move four is a slightly um, less popular line, I think. Knight f three, because because like um, well, there's there's loads of different moves you can do here. Yeah. No, I mean, you guys were bishop g four people, yeah. I used to do bishop g4 way back and then switch to de. Okay. Which I think some. I'd, if I had to say what was the main line, I'd say de was the main line. Well, d take. But, I mean, I'm pretty sure I'm right in saying that d takes and if black plays knight d7, can't I make an immediate draw with knight takes f7 or something like that? Yeah, yeah. He doesn't want to go for that. That is not something you would want <laughs> if you're playing to win with for the norm. So, yeah, uh, that line's pretty much ruled out. But you can go D E ninety and C six. There isn't an immediate draw against that as far as no, I sure, that's true, and that's uh, that's another. But okay, I mean G six. I think the reputation of G six probably got a bit damaged by the fact that this is the opening of Nigel Short's famous King March to H six game, isn't it? Ah, okay. and I mean, okay, people don't think of that so much in relation to the opening, but it's not going to do you opening a lot of favours reputation wise, is it? Hmm. If this happened, because Black's position, you know, the, the thing which led to that was the sort of incredible passivity of Black's position. But you know, if you know what you're doing, you can you can challenge this, make this much more interesting than that. Bishop c4. Yep. Okay. This is this is still um, short to Timon, I think. Okay. Bishop b3. Yeah, now I'm trying to remember if there were some lines where white could play quick sort of knight g5, something where they can try and force black to fix the pawns in the centre. Yeah. You know, if you can keep the pawns, if you can keep the tension with the pawns in the centre, then the bishop on g7 has sort of a potential life. Whereas if you can fix it, you can cause it trouble, I guess. Okay, so castles, castles. Rookie one. Right, knight c6. And then white exchanged in the center. Okay. So, I mean, it does look quite quiet, but um, at least the pawn structure is not symmetrical. Well, that's right. I mean, okay, I think that probably white, probably black sort of half threatening knight a5 in these. I'm not sure that. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not so sure, though. I mean, you know, that structure, if, if you take with the A pawn, the structure's not so bad and you can play a move like bishop g5. I'm not sure that's a threat. I'm just thinking whether black is ever playing bishop g4, but when white can go solid with c3, maybe he's not. Maybe that bishop goes to f5. I don't know. Mm. Um, so white played c3, which I anyway puts him in so to the knight a5. Yeah, that doesn't, yeah, yeah. doesn't now get the bishop. Um, so that's... bishop f5... And knight pd2. I mean, this doesn't feel like the most challenging setup White could find, but I I don't know whether David usually plays G6, even if he usually plays the Alakans. I'm not sure if yeah. he usually plays. I G6. don't know either. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I don't know whether White could have prepared this in detail or whether this is. Yeah. Um, slightly unusual. And e5, yeah? Yeah. Well, that's the break which Black. I suppose, wants to make work, because otherwise it's difficult to bring that bishop on g7 
to life against those very solid pawns in the center. So now, yeah, the, the, well, the, I don't think White especially wants to play d5, but I imagine that here it would get met by knight a5 anyway, and, and that would... Yeah. And the d pawn you can't keep. Knight a5. And then Black is either getting the bishop bear or winning the d pawn, I think. Yeah. So yeah. that's not the way. So then the only question is, can White hold the centre or does he have to exchange? If he has to exchange, it, it already looks sort of okay for Black to me. I wonder... Knight d2 doesn't look like the most challenging. I don't know if White can try bishop g5 or something there, but something which hinders Black's plan feels a bit more to the point. Instead of knight d2, so... Well, I would think. I don't know. I, I'm, I'm really... That's very much off the top of my head. Just a move yeah. which doesn't sort of allow e5 to happen quite so easily. Yeah. <coughs> my knack of knowledge of this will... Uh... <laughs> become apparent i'm sure probably already has okay but do you not share my feeling that if white has to take about the only thing That's wrong fine, doesn't it for black yeah well i mean there yeah. are some positions where the knight on b6 can be not a great piece and white might be able to put something on c5 and get some pressure i think you need yeah. to be able to use that c5 square before before black's pieces all reorganize you know i'm thinking of some c3 sicilian positions or something where you get a piece to b5 and you, you you're c5 sorry and you, black sort of regrets having that knight on b6 but okay you always have that knight on b6 in the alakin don't you you, you learn to live with it so well, yeah guess. yeah 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 remember it can be a real pain can't it well, yeah. hi cool. kevin good afternoon kevin how are you doing kevin goes two knights c3 and d5 yeah oh then e5 and e6 sack Ah, okay. six sack. Yeah. Okay. I'm going to look out for that, Kevin. Um, yeah. Okay. So knight e4. Yeah. Okay. So the bishop's defending the queen, so the rook's not overloaded. That's first important little tactical point. Yes. So if queen takes, then we go bishop takes. But um, on the other hand, you know, bishop takes doesn't look like what white might have dreamt of but i guess the, there was some yeah you you then probably put the bishop back on b3 again it's just yeah actually this happened he did play queen takes oh okay bishop takes. yeah i mean i don't think e7 is a good square for the queen because of that bishop e3 oh no then the knight's on freeze okay you can't do that so maybe maybe if queen e7 something like queen d6 is annoying it seems sensible for black to take the queens when white has to take back with the bishop yeah i mean if you just look at the development then Black's not doing so badly, yeah? You know, no disrespect to the Alakine, but Black spends the first three moves or so moving the knight, three of the first four moves moving the knight around and then ends up with pretty flowing development in this case. Mm. So, yeah, so it gets... And, and also because the bishop had to take, then Black can easily get onto this... Um, oh, sorry. Turn my... um, so... So the threat, the threat here is bishop takes e4. It is indeed. That is definitely the threat. So the most obvious things would be, well, the other thing is the, the square white would like to put the c1 bishop on is e3, but obviously that leaves the knight on freeze. So that's sort of the first slight dilemma of white's development. Yeah. So one possibility is to put the knight on c5 and... You know, that's the first, that's where I said, you know, using a minor piece on c5, if you can hold it there, that would be possibly a, a decent way to go. That's what he did. That's yeah. what he played. Okay. I mean, the, the thing you have to make sure is that black can't go e4 or something. But I, I don't think, I think white can play. So if, if he did e4. So again, we're trying to use the fact that the rook is going to be overloaded if the rook's here. But I suspect knight h4 yeah. or something is. Hi, Ocelot. Um... So knight h4. Or maybe knight g5. I'm not sure. It doesn't like yeah. knight. Or maybe, knight g5 yeah. maybe knight because g5. the e pawn could actually be hard to defend. Because there is three yeah. on that e pawn. Now then. you've got bishop b3 in the mix if black player just plays rook e8 or something. That's probably. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It. It's one of those things where black's gaining a lot of space, but he's ultimately just a little bit overstretched, I think. In other words, the opposite of what the idea is when you play the Alicans, which is to <laughs> provoke white and then show that they're overstretched. Yeah. That's the irony of modern theory. You don't really... Mm -hmm. 
often get the uh, the, the purest sort of things aren't always happening. Yeah. yeah. So e4 is a bit too much. Probably e4 is too, too much. much. Then knight c4 five looks like the right yeah. move. Yeah. So he's oh so black squan rook d5. Yeah, that's probably that looks very sensible. So now, but what about knight? Knight b7, you're just putting it somewhere where it can't get back out again, I suppose. Well, I hope that just rook b8 or something rook would... Rook b8 and you can't do it, so that's... Yeah, so rook d5 is fine. I mean, white can hit the rook, but I don't think they can hit the rook effectively enough to make knight b7 a good move. Oh, heat dropping in Devon. Weather warning's cancelled. It's still hot here, Ocelot, I tell you, near London. Yeah, it's very hot here. Yeah. Um... So yeah, why so not just go bishop e3 defending the knight? I mean, oh, then I guess there's... So bishop e3, let's say. Uh, there's knight c4 to contend with, I suppose. Oh, uh, yeah, that's quite nice because then you are activating this bishop. Yeah, it's was... getting quite active. Yeah, that was not good on b6, um, but it is good on c4. Because you're threatening to just swap it. Yes. And can we still not take on b7? I guess that. I take on b7. Um, Rook b8 is still an issue. I wanted to try something like bishop b3 now, just to see if I can, you know, because we understand that if, if black just sort of gets away with this, as it were, then it's going to be very nice for black. But bishop b3, I just, you know, white's pieces are a bit loose, but so are black's in this moment. So I wonder if we can exploit that. Bishop b3 would be the move to try, I suspect. Yeah, and now if you know now if black takes on e3, we can take back possibly either way. And I don't think our knight is getting trapped anymore. We're going to become able to go to c6 or d5, depending on c6 or d5. Sorry, d6 or c5. It's yeah. the heat, depending on where the rook goes. So, yeah. so maybe knight c4. Well, if knight, knight c4, c4 was work, right, then maybe knight to... rook b8 wasn't probably the move. Yes, that's true. You could maybe try rook b5 might be possible. Yeah. Or even knight takes. But, you know, rook b5, at the very least, white has... No, I'm not sure. That's interesting. Yeah. I mean, bishop a4 means white won't lose pieces, but white will lose the b2 pawn back, so... Okay. No, this is maybe working just about for black, but... Hmm. What else can he do apart from bishop e3? Because, you know, if you can't take on b7 and you can't go bishop e3, then it feels like knight c5 was... Yeah. You know, it was, it was was it's the right idea, but it's sort of for the moment unsustainable. Yeah, he's dropped back, actually. He dropped That's back. That's a sign it was unsustainable, I guess. I mean, the yeah. only advantage of the knight on b3 as opposed to e4 is that it won't be on prees after a move like bishop e3. So it enables white to develop. But it seems to me more likely that White underestimated Rook D five actually. Yeah, that's my hunch. Yeah, because it's like like we were complaining about the knight on B six. Well, now it might become a bit of a dude if it can. Pl yeah. I mean, if you can put it somewhere C four or B four where it sorry C four or A four. I must start saying what I mean. Where um, it helps to keep the C one bishop at home. Yeah, you know, Black's got this nice development, and if you can supplement that by hindering white's development as well then it becomes something quite tangible so what did he play d8 d8 okay that hits the bishop although yeah. it does yeah so if bishop e3 now i'm guessing knight c4 might be yeah he played um bishop e2 yeah okay that makes sense so now probably is he intending he might be intending bishop e3. He might also flick in bishop g5 at some point, because if black has to play f6, then that rook on d5 feels a little bit less comfortable. So bishop g5 and then bishop e3, and I'd start to feel white's position has a bit more harmony. Yeah, so maybe could he have done could he have done it straight away? Uh-huh. Um, the thing is, no. now with the bishop still on d1, I guess when you go bishop e3, black has that knight c4 move. The nice thing about bishop e2 is it's got rid of that first, and then I think the yeah. idea is more of a threat. Yeah, so here. I think that's the plan. Here. 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 Yeah, this looks 
nice for black uh, because yeah. white's not in, you know once that bishop's exchanged then black's rook can settle on a square like d6 which is otherwise going to be a bit vulnerable so i think that's that makes sense for black that's why i think white went bishop e2 and then i would say he's sort of half threatening bishop g5 yeah only half threatening but... half threatening <laughs> yeah. and what did knight a4 ah, now knight a4 okay so is so if bishop g5 then I guess you can go f6. Ah, I see, sorry, the first six. point is that when the knight takes on b2, it's stopping bishop c4. So, uh, yeah, 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 so that's yeah. probably actually the full point, isn't it? That's, yeah. that's as yeah. much as you need. Okay, that's quite handy. Yeah, and white doesn't, white's not in any sort of position to be playing f6, bishop c4, and then trying to pin things. I think there'd be a number of answers to that. Yeah. So, yeah. No, so, bishop G so if he's kept that bishop at home, then black's really... I mean, you know, you're playing for a win for a norm. This is the sort of... This is a position yeah. to be pretty happy with after this number of moves, I think, because you just... You've got light pressure and there's no sort of... Nothing terrible happening at the other end. Yeah. That was more of a footballing kind of... <laughs> okay. Bishop C4. Was that played? Yes, this was played. Okay. And David uh, played rook d1 here. Yeah, because rook d6, then I guess there might be some knight g5 things. It, it looks safer at this point and more logical to trade a pair of rooks. So can white, so white, play bishop can white g5. do his bishop g5 thing now? Yeah. That's what I thought he had in mind. <coughs> and black takes presumably on a1. because that's, Takes an a1. The rook is better on e1 than a1, so you... Yeah, and actually knight takes. Oh, that. knight takes. Okay, that's interesting. Yeah, that might... I mean, that gives some sort of hope of trying to kick the knight out of a4 at some point. On the other hand, you still have this dilemma of how to defend b2 without losing c3. On the other hand, black has, a, has an issue to solve at the other end now because f6 is not legal, so... Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You can't defend with that one. Black needs so to gone, um, probably just go rook. Oh, did you go d6? He went rook d6. Okay. Yeah, that also, I mean, that makes sense to me because the bishop isn't on the square where it's going to hassle it from the, you know, from c5 or somewhere. So, yeah, so we basically, white just has this, if white could tidy up um, the b2, c3 thing, then, then his position's kind of okay because structurally there's nothing much wrong with it. But... White needs a good move here, and I haven't seen one yet. He played uh, bishop back to defend this b2 pawn. Okay, that feels more like a possibly a necessary move rather yeah. than one that's going to solve all these problems. Yeah. But I guess now maybe knight g5 is a threat? Actually, it's probably a real threat, because something like knight g5, and if you go rook d7, then... No, I'm about to say something silly. But anyway, I want to stop it. I want to stop knight g5, I think. Did he play h6? No. E4, he got on with it. Ah, sorry, I'm missing stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so knight g5 hitting f7 can then be met by knight e5. So that's a good move for, uh, well, for pushing your initiative forward, at least. Of course, yeah. it carries a little bit of risk, but it feels, feels sort of thematic and sensible. So knight... So knight g5. And knight e5. Yeah. Knight e5 defending f7. Yeah. And if this one gets taken, there's a rook d1 check at the end. It certainly is. <coughs> so all right. So black's piece is. Very good. Oh, wait a minute. Actually, yeah. So you take on c4 first, don't you? And then the check becomes mate. Right. Yeah. More, more serious check. Yeah. Okay. So, okay. And now, of course, I mean, having played e4. The, the d3 square is potentially an issue as well. True. Although yeah. that that horse is doing a sort of important defensive of the job. The, but I think you know, White would like to play bishop b3 and kick that knight away and keep pressure on f7, but then the knight goes to c5. and I Yeah, this I is what happened. Yeah, that, bishop b3. that's not White dealing with the pressure, is knight it? Knight c5, black. and now look, there's even more pressure on d3. Yes. It does feel to me like David Fitzsimmons is having one of those tournaments where everything just works. You know, it's everything's well, <laughs> it's together. It's... I hope. I hope so. I hope so. I mean, yesterday we were commenting on his game, and I thought he was winning, and then, um, and then he lost that one when 
we after we oh uh, this was the game who was that against that was um that was two rounds ago that was um oh sorry we were commentating on it we were commentating yes, yes. Okay, sorry that was um, against joe mcphillips and oh that's right no that's when right. we that's left right. it it was looking game. pretty good yeah um yeah but it'll all not matter. Um, yes. Yes. No, that's the thing about the norms. You don't worry so much about how as you got them. it. Yeah. yeah. Hi, Tom. How are you doing? Um, nice position to play under pressure, but there will be scary moments. Yeah, that's that's true. No, for sure. Yeah. Okay. So White played Bishop F4. Okay. Yeah. I mean, it was looking to me like White certainly didn't have a way to hold the Bishop pair there. So, but... Okay, the thing is, if you use the knight on c5 to take the bishop on b3, then the pawn on e4 is is somewhat weaker because there's no... But okay, there's... I mean, the knight, more importantly, probably, if you do take the bishop on b3, then the knight on g5 really didn't have any very obvious retreat squares. Does it? If it has to go to h3, that looks... That looks quite, true. quite yeah. good news for black. Yeah, that is true. Um... So he didn't play knight takes b3, did he? But no, he. I mean, he, I can see why you might not want to because the d3 square is is a tempting thing. Am I missing a? Am I missing something tactical after knight takes b3 and h6? So knight takes b3, knight takes b3, h6. Let's have a look. Probably knight takes b3. Yeah, because it's a bit silly on h1, a a1 otherwise. And h6 is this? Yes, and just drop back. So it just has to go to h3. Okay. Oh no, that's not. No, good. that's not good because you can. No, right. So. Um, ah, so we just... must be sort of missing something tactically. Maybe. I mean, what's what what I was wondering is if he can take on e four with some f three thing at the end or something. So the back uh, rank. This back rank. Right, right, so you can't something. do that. All right, I'm going to just look. If you play knight takes e four, bishop takes bishop takes e five and f three, something like that. Does is that why it's? Okay, so here. A lot more serious than it's here. Yeah. I'm not sure if you take it. feels like you should probably yeah. take And then if yeah. this might be the reason. That could be it, couldn't it? I think so. That and, I, and, you know, what? I think White needs that because he certainly can't recapture yeah. anything. So. Yeah. Okay, but he will... F3 obviously creates space for the king, so then the rook's free to take on E5 if the bishop moved. Yeah, no, that looks like something black was right to avoid. Partly because you don't want to clarify the whole thing too early and then end up with some end game, which is, you know, very yeah. hard to win. In fact, I'm surprised the engine likes black as much as it still does there. Um, so rook d7 is kind of the move which keeps all the tension. Yeah. But of course, when you're under this much pressure, nerves-wise, keeping all the tension is a mixed, mixed blessing. <laughs> cause there yeah. Are downsides to it. Okay. Does White want to make some? Uh, he took the knight. I mean, it's a, such a it's such an uh, an annoying knight, threatening to come into d3 the whole time. That that makes sense, but he needs a good. Okay, move. and then played f3. F3. Okay, so it's just uh, actually a similar it's idea in a way played, yeah. to what we saw in that last variation, isn't it? It's... Looks like a key moment coming up right here after f3. Yeah. Time for yeah, a decent exactly. thing. Can find something strong. Yes. Indeed, so. Okay, so the plus points for black are we've got this knight coming into d3. At times we've got f3, you know, f3 puts pressure on e4, but it does weaken the dark squares, and white has just given up the dark square bishop. So, you know, tactical ideas involving the bishop on, you know, if you bring it around to the b b6 to g1 diagonal, something like that, there will be some tactical themes in some variations probably. You can't do that now just directly, slowly. It needs to be done in the context of some ongoing tactics. I mean, yeah. like, like D3 is a move you would look at. Is it trying like D3? Yeah, but the, the worry would be self-pinning, but it looks like a sort of promising place to start because you're trying to deal with a pin against the bishop and the knight simultaneously attacks the rook and defends the bishop. So it feels like a logical place to kick off. Yeah, because the rook's defended, so that's good. So we can... Yeah, the rook's defend and the rook on d7 now is defending f7, which is why rook d7 yeah. was a good idea, I think. So, right. so rook, if, if, 
Well, if Rook D1, I wondered if E3 just E3 queen and E2 and just queen. Yeah. E3 is very fast. <laughs> I'm yeah. pretty confident that white has to play on the <laughs> E file and can't go to E3 because of Bishop F4. So it's quite possible that Rook E2 is an only move. Yeah. Fine. So Rook D1, you can't. Um, so Rook here, yeah? I think so. Doesn't look very appealing, but yes. No, it doesn't. So, um... by the way, when I said an only move, I assume you can't sack the exchange. You could play something like f takes e4, and if the knight took the rook, you could take on f5. And white's minor pieces are reasonably well placed then, but rooks rooks in end games, I quite fancy its chances. I think. Mm. Um. Yeah, so what's black got now? It feels like black ought to have a big... Can you go like rook, knight, c1? Well, it's certainly a move to look at. And then I guess I'll go back again to e1. Yeah. Actually taking on b3s. I'm trying to get this rook d1 check, of course, but... Um... Yes. Yeah. So... Well, we want to get this... E pawn going. We do. Because even like e3 rook takes, you can just go bishop. F4. Yeah, but there is a check on e8 then, which might uh, be a pain. Yeah. I mean, I don't think that's going to be so bad for that because that bishop on f4 can do things at the end of the line as well. Yeah. But I so suspect. So threatening to take on e4, presumably. Well, kind of, yeah. Yeah. So you want to do something about that. Um, I mean, you know. Oh, okay. I'm going. I'm going to follow Tom's line. Knight d3 to f4. Okay, to f4. Yeah, that makes sense. So rook back to e1 again. Rook e1, and then time to get aggressive. <laughs> <laughs> Have we been very passive so far? So then, well, we could be. Aggressive. Oh, then rook d2. D2. I'm oh, sorry, I've forgotten Rook D2 was there. This is definitely yeah, yeah. this kind of thing. Yes, it? yes, yes, yes. Yeah. Okay. Well, Don't this know. looks very nasty. Does doesn't it? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, Rook D2. Thank you, my chess. I'm uh, a bit shocked. I didn't see Rook D2, but it looks very unpleasant for White. On the face yeah. of it. So okay, it does leave F7 hanging. So maybe. We should just check whether knight takes f7 is a move or something. Here, knight takes f7. Yeah. Now Feels everybody's checking yeah, everybody. So I guess we take. I think so. Oh. oh I didn't like taking, but who who could tell? <laughs> yeah. Okay, I'm going king h1 anyway, I think. King h1. Now, well, you need to retreat the bishop probably along the diagonal back to somewhere like c7, I guess. White's going to have discovered checks, but I can't see a, a really annoying one. But who knows? It's all No, it didn't like that at all. Okay, so this is, this is quite tough. What else can we do? Ah, he's played something different, actually. Okay. But it's certainly, that looks like a very scary thing. Scary it possibility, although as we saw, there may be some. No, he hasn't played something different. Rookie, but rookie he's got knight d3, knight d rookie 2 So he's probably, yeah, yeah he's, he's now thinking about knight. Okay, f4. so let's try it again. Knight f4. Yeah. Um, rookie 1, rook d2. That all looks good. That does look good. So knight takes knight f7. f7. I think if, that, if knight takes f7 doesn't work, it's very clearly going to be good. Is, um, is e takes f. No, it's going to be check on e5 and take on f3. That's no good. Um, so then now we're looking for what about what about this might be rubbish knight to h3 whoa it might be rubbish yeah. it might be genius and thing. if they take oh that didn't which work i will i will take i think for the moment yeah this hasn't worked though i was going to come in with checks but it's not no it's sort of scary but i think the discovered check is going to it's going come to, to my rescue yeah, oh, yeah. Cause it's going to need to as well, but it is going to come to the rest. Yeah, okay, don't do that then. 
So here is what we are looking for. Um. Well, maybe just your idea of dropping the bishop back before we even do any of that. Ah, uh, perhaps, but... Hello, Bagatour, superfan. Yeah. Who wants six pences and half pennies brought back? <laughs> You've probably got... Okay, that seemed to be... The engine like that. Okay, but... yeah, so we're, we're trying to... Invited. We're keeping flexibility with regard to the king's side, I guess. Zooks, Frank. We thought Zooks, Frank. I don't know. Looks. Right. Are we threatening e takes f three? I guess we probably are. Because e takes f three. If white takes back, then knight h three is a sort of mating in two pattern. And it really right? does. Yeah. That does the business. I mean, white can flick in discovered checks that may impact on any of that, but it's not a bad idea to have in the in the pipeline. Yeah. So if white try, yeah. So can white, what does Because it's only really these two pieces in the attack. Yeah. All white can really do is is knight either five, come back and take on e four somehow. Maybe knight take, six. How about or that? Take the bishop. Yeah. So I. Okay. King can't go to g seven because of knight e eight check. So I guess king f eight probably. King f eight. Which is slightly annoying. I'd rather not have to go to f eight. If I can go to, maybe I should go to h eight. And then if there's another check, I can go to g seven and avoid this. But I'm not sure. Okay. Somewhere there. So white could maybe take here. Yeah, perhaps. I'm. That feels very. Shaky, but I can't. I mean, is there some bishop b6 and knight d3 simply? Is that going to do the job? Bishop d6. Bishop, no, no, bishop b6 check. Sorry, bishop okay. b6. Bishop b6 check. Oh, sorry, wait, this bishop takes d6 as well. I hadn't even looked at, but um, this does look quite scary for white. Yeah. So actually, uh, so so black has gone down a different line. Okay, um, let's go and so see. This what does look done. promising. Doesn't I mean, there's it? lots of possibities, and they all look quite frightening for white. He's taken yeah. on e's f three. Okay. So rookie two, and so not knight f four, which we were just looking at. Yes, He's gone. And the engine suggests that has slightly improved white's lot, which is easy to believe because some of those other lines were sort of tactically scary, whereas now yeah. it feels more like white's position will come together a bit, and he, his white's positionally worse or black has the initiative and the bishop pair but it's not going to be something so immediate takes and just drop bishop back yeah okay okay fine and this is where they're at white still has these development problems you know knight you'd like to play sort of knight c2 or something it still drops the b port so it's still difficult to re re coordinate their pieces with any with any decent squares so what to play? So now maybe we should actually. Yeah, we, we haven't only got one let's game. Let's look at some of the other games and then we'll come back. But this is this is kind of the big game we're following just because of the norm opportunity. Indeed. Um, let's see. We'll just go through. We should look at Ravi's because he's the tournament leader. Indeed. Yes, he won again last night, yes, I think. Yes. And is very well placed. Okay. But he's facing a threat of checkmate by the look of it. He's oh, he spotted it. it. He's seen Crisis it. Crisis is yeah. over. <laughs> Defended the checkmate threat. So um, what opening was this? This was this um, was another of these strange Jabava yeah. um, Knight C3 things. Okay, King A1. Which you can tell from my description, I'm a huge fan of. <laughs> <laughs> so is black just going to like, like rook B8? Well, I mean, it's sort of, yeah, like white's attack looks like it's in slight danger of grinding to a halt and black's attack looks a bit more purposeful. I guess if, we, if you think for a moment about how white could maybe... Some rook h5 to g5 is on the table for white. 
Maybe we should actually look at all the moves of this game because everyone's always asking how 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 should you meet the London system, the Jabava London. Okay, system. yeah, this is a funny version, isn't it, the Jabava? But... Do we have a little? Yeah, let's have a very a quick whiz look. through. See what Ravi did. Ah, I mean, all my my own recipes tend to avoid include avoiding one. Uh, is attending to avoid the move E6, and he's got it in on move yeah. one. <laughs> he's doing um, a diff taking a different approach from the Wells approach. Well, no, I mean, but, the, you know, you can't really predict two knights. Either. I mean, what, in a sense, it seems, like I said yesterday about the modern, if mm. you're playing moves like knight C3 and bishop F4, surely your only real pawn push that you've got planned is E4. Yeah. And with the greatest of respect to the French, you kind of feel like, why it should be getting on and doing it straight away. Oh, but, but this I, goes directly. I mean, this this really is the French defence, and if he goes e4 now. If he goes e4, it's a French, yeah. No, this is, I mean, obviously 1e6 was an invitation to the French, yeah. and 2d5 sort of remains one in a sense. But after bishop f4, white yeah. saying no, no Frenches. No French. Okay, and now knight f6. Yeah, Okay. And now knight b5, so I think the thing here is that black can play knight a6, but then the bishop, oh, sorry, the knight's a little misplaced. So it's often, you know, then white might have the good sense not to block his c-pawn and play c4 at some point, and you get something back where the knight on a6 is a bit out of play. Mm. But Ravi finds the other way to defend c7, which is the check and bishop a5. And in a sense, this does it without misplacing any pieces. Although, the, I mean, you could argue the bishop on a5 is a little misplaced, but it can also be, it can it can reroute more easily than the knight, knight on a6 could, I guess. So a6 is a, I mean, these are these are positions which didn't arise in games between strong players twenty years ago. It's all very new, this stuff. Yeah. I mean, you can see why white might find this attractive. The bishop on a5 does look a little bit out of play. But on the other hand, the knight on a3 might prove to be a more sort of long-term out-of-play problem. It's difficult to know. C5. Okay, so worth just mentioning that I believe bishop d6 here, which looks quite challenging on the face of it, is met, I think, by queen b6. I have a feeling that's uh -huh. one of those moments. And if the if you take the rook, then we take on b2. And the, well, actually, white's position is kind of falling apart. And you can see why the knight on a3 is so bad at moments like this. I mean, it's potentially so bad if something like this happens. So, so if the bishop comes out? Well, I think, I mean, simplest is we could probably just take the rook then, bishop c3 and queen a1. But yeah. Yeah. That's probably what you do. I mean, I suspect some exchange sack's quite decent as well, but you can see that white can't emerge with the material or, or yeah, yeah. coherent position. So that's why he chose knight e5 instead. Okay, and now here we go. This is the bishop rerouting. I mean, you know, it's a bit of a palaver, bishop b4, check to a5, c7, but, but it's not such a disastrous one. And the knight on a3, you know, it would much rather be on d2 and f3, wouldn't it? So Yeah. Queen f3. Maybe not f3, blocking the queen. But Okay, so he's... That's another... I mean, you know, you, one of the nice things about having the bishop on c7 rather than d6 is that you can take on e5 with the knight without getting forked. Simple things, but I think they make quite a difference. I think, yeah. you know, you often have to manoeuvre around that knight on e5 or end up taking it with the bishop or not. If you can take it with the knight, that feels very thematic. So you can see here already the position we got, the... Um, kind of origins of it are all here aren't they is white black is going to be well placed on the queen side and white has to make something count with this little king side flurry bishop b8 that's, an, that's mm. a really nice move if it's a good i don't know if it's a good move but it's a very nice thought just to free up the queen again and you know you think in terms of queen side attacks rook b8 b5 but bishop b8 is an unusual twist that used to be my favourite square for the queen, b8. I'm not used to putting my bishops there. Oh, really? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I used to play queen, b8 in one or two positions, which I'm afraid you put it on the engine now. It's, it's not. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I think that move forces f5, which is presumably the point of it. 
Oh, really? I think this feels like the moment where if White's going to make an attack, he has to get some G4 to move or something to work. Doesn't White have okay. to? G4 you know, here. I mean, the Jabama system feels to me like it, I don't know, just it may be rubbish because Black may win a pawn and that may be the end of it. But you kind of feel like something like that is what White has to mm -hmm. try. Otherwise, how is White going to create trouble on the king side? Yeah. And, you know, it may very well be that knight takes e5 is a perfectly decent response. But in that case, I think I, you know, I'm not crazy about white's position already. If you can't play g4, if you can't open any files, I mean, you know, that's what I don't like about two knights e3. It feels like it's not taking pawn breaks seriously enough. But if you can't pawn break here, what's... At least now, white could play, I don't know, knight, d, knight takes d3 is an issue, isn't it? No, sorry. Uh, for, after, for example, after G takes F five or something, it's yeah, it's an issue that Black can double all those pawns. Yeah. Ah, uh, Kevin doesn't like the knight on A three as well. Well, that's what I said. The knight on A three is the is the root of all all evil, really. <laughs> <laughs> um, I assume we can't. No, that's got to be nonsense. I want to sort of take on E five. <laughs> Or get the thing back in the game, but it doesn't look promising at all. Hmm. No, I don't know. If you can't play, if you have to play Queen G3, then I already think I like Black's position. Yeah. And presumably B5 and getting so on B5, with it. yeah, and Black gets it going on the other side of the board. Yeah, it is, and it's quite one. Quick, I think. Queen B6. Yeah. And Tim, I suppose That's he's trying to catch position. up really with H4. Yeah. B4. Takes queen takes knight c two queen b six. Of course, now your bishop's in the way of the rook. Of course, having extolled bishop b eight, but but without it, the queen wouldn't have done all this damage. Yeah, so so still, black's got a bit of organisation. I think black just has one move necessary to organise bishop c seven, mm. and then or yeah, I guess, and then rook b eight again. But bishop c seven now. Okay, it's not so easy to bring all the pieces over. H six. G6, King A1, yeah. I mean, what else? Because you need to be ready to defend B2. Yeah, and this and could have be B1, yeah. B8, B1. Okay, I mean, if you play C4 at the wrong moment, maybe White gets a knight again by playing D4 and stuff. Oh, but... uh, yeah, Ravi's coming in with the A pawn. There are different ways of doing this. I mean, you know, White's got to look out very much for... Oh, maybe the knight on c2 is useful in some situations if black plays c4 and knight c5 and tries to tries to sort of win with knight b3 check. You have knight a3 yeah. at least. But, it, you know, when did we last see an attacking move from, okay, h, h6, but it, you, you only have any sort of feeling of hope for white if there's some attacking moves you can make now. Yeah. So rook h5 to g5, is that the most obvious attempt to... It might just be dealt with by King H8. It might be as simple as that. Yeah, the engine's well impressed. <laughs> it's, um, I think King H8, and you know, you're never going to be able to dangerously sack because after Rook G5, you know, if you take on G6, I'm always going to have Rook G8 at the end. I don't think that yeah. there's just nothing backing this up. Really. Not enough, is it? Not enough. Because the not bishops are enough. pointing towards the king side, but. They're both a bit blocked, aren't they? This they one are, they're a bit blocked. Well, Bishop on F4 is also absolutely tied to defending the E-pawn because Bishop E5 would just win on the spot if it was possible. So yeah. It would fork the Queen with mate on B2, I think. So, Yeah, no, I mean, I don't like Rook H5 to G5, really, but how else to... Yeah. And, you know... You know, I can see how it's not so automatic for Black to... To break through on the queen side, but it's not going to be impossible either. And yeah, it does look a bit grim for Tim, I think. Yeah, because he's played a couple of these Jabava Londons in this tournament, I think, hadn't he? Yeah, okay. Let's see. Should we see this other one that's looking decisive? Ah, just see how wow. it's going. Uh, so this is oh, it's finished, in fact. Oh, okay, so this is Daniel Fernandez has uh, got a win against Joe McPhillips. Okay, 
Um, yeah, because Dan, didn't Daniel Fernandez lose a horrible game last month? Or did he win a horrible game? <laughs> he won, They had a very strange game, him and Jonah, I think. Yes, he won a, he won a crushing victory, I think. Is that right? He said Daniel won against Jonah. Yeah, I mean, he was having a rough Absolutely. problem. He's finished with yeah. three and a half out of four, in fact. Yeah, yeah, no, he's had against a very... a pretty finish. impressive field, Marcus, Ravi, Jonah and, and Jeremy yeah. Phillips. That's a very impressive finish. Yeah, so he took a bit of time to warm up and then but once yeah. he got going, he was very, very impressive. Going, yes. Yes. Okay. Okay, that's um yeah, well, and black species look beautifully centralized and are, are doing the business and the bishops on the A file look a bit kind of ridiculous to be honest. <laughs> Harsh but fair. Harsh but fair. Um right, should we see Marcus against Ketty? Yes. Oh, this looks. This is the. Um, this is very much like the Tim and Short structure again. But I don't think this was another Alakins. <laughs> I think this was a. Modern... She doesn't do that, Alakins, does she? She's, but it she's, does she's, does look like that structure once. Again. I know she. Yes, she does this um, perk sort of thing. Let's see how it came about. Well, if you're going to do one G six, there is some sense in which one knight f three is a slight encouragement, but. This is a dangerous system as well with bishop c4, queen e2. Early e5 here. Yeah. Well, I think that's one of the things. It's quite hard for black to stop some early e5 being at least a decent try. And you can see now how it emerges with the same pawn structure as the Alakins we were looking at. Yeah, because there's that knight moving around like the Alakins. Okay, so white takes a tempo to stop bishop g4. I don't know the detailed theory, but it makes good sense in principle yeah knight d4 i don't know how similar this is to short timon but it's i think i think timon got this exchange of knights in to try and free his position but then obviously as we know it didn't get very freed at all <laughs> it should be six okay that's interesting i don't know the theory but can you i mean Seems to me like you can at least consider taking that if you don't have any other weaknesses and you can put your knight on f3. So if you can take and maneuver knight d2 to f3, is that what's that like? You know, if the knight's on c3, I don't, I wouldn't touch this. I don't think because I would think the e5 pawn would be too weak eventually. Mm. But if I can put the knight on f3, then I'm not so hung up about the weakness on e5, and I kind of think. What if you try and take it? Well, oh, we're going to get your queen. I'm going to go knight f3 and take your queen. Knight f3. <laughs> I don't know. I, uh, yeah. You know, knight d7 is probably a move you only because the knight, I don't know, it's a move right. you probably only want if you're actually going to cause the e pawn troubles. Yeah. I don't know. I wonder. This certainly worth a look for white. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's almost a, it's not quite a rule that I'm aware of, but I have a feeling if you can put the knight on f3 and keep the e pawn solid and you don't have any weaknesses then i think it's slightly surprising blacks allowing bishop takes e6 yeah anyway okay so he avoided it he avoided the exchange of bishops in the only way one can in this position which is c3 yes and then bishop c2 but you know i don't i and i you know there's loads of openings loads of sort of italians and spanishes and things where white avoids those exchanges by putting a bishop on c2 but it feels to me here like the bishop on e6 isn't such a bad piece and i think i was more worried about black's position before that than i am now mm. although she clearly wants to exchange the bishop anyway she's gonna go for the exchange and they oh did they do some shadow boxing they did a bit of yes they did a bit of uh, the commentator's the nervous <laughs> and then and then uh... and then he's bringing the knight to f3 anyway Rook d5. I mean, one thing you could say if you're trying to assess the position, just the knight on f3 just looks better than the knight on b6. It's not yeah. a big, not a big thing, but it's a bit, a bit more comfortable. On the other hand, maybe the knight on b6 can claim to keep the, you know, keep the rook tied to a1, defending the a4 pawn for a bit. Although I doubt if that's yeah. a big thing either. Bishop f4. Okay. Yeah, I don't. Queen f4 looks a little bit. Uh, Queen c4, sorry, looks a little bit clumsy to me because if white avoids the exchange as he just did, 
do you not get the sense that black species are becoming just a teeny bit short of squares? Yeah. Not Especially in the green, time. isn't it? Because it also the night would want to have that square as a possibility. But well, how are we gonna, yeah, how are we going to drop the queen? Back? I think we can also play b3 when we need to now. It feels mm. to me like white, white's just coordinating his pieces a little bit better. Okay. Why hasn't Katya developed her f8 rook? Is, is that a question? That is a That's question. from Kevin. Ke Katya is Kevin's teacher. So Kevin is, you know, whatever we say, that, you know. Uh -huh. <laughs> yeah, next time she tells you tells you off for not developing your rook, you can say, you can say yeah, me? you can say back, what about your f8? What about your rook, mate? <laughs> <laughs> <coughs> yes, that is a good question. I think the answer is probably she hasn't really had time to. But what what I find difficult to play about these positions, I think, is the lack of obvious pawn breaks for either side. Maybe sometimes white tries to play e6, but not mostly. I think they just manoeuvre around without any pawn breaks, which doesn't come so naturally to me. Mm. So, yeah, what does he do? Oh, rookie she went e6. Ah, she, okay, so maybe e6 is a thing. I don't know. Yeah. Rookie four. four. So yeah, this queen queen c five. Well, queen has c five, but then I guess we can find ways to try and keep chasing it. I don't know. Might be three, yeah. Queen e seven. C four. Oh, that's interesting because now White's creating real potential weaknesses like the B four square and stuff. So he has to have a concrete idea, which might, you know. Crapping the A5 pawn is one possible concrete idea, but I doubt if it's that. Something, you know, he has to. Oh, this is, tell this you is what, it is that. Because look, it is that. Move. Oh, he's just grabbing. Next move, he just grabbed the A pawn. What's a greedy, but probably quite reasonable. Yes. Okay. So why can't? Oh, is yeah, the other problem is he's hitting B7 as well, which makes it all a bit trickier. Well, there you go. That's a very simple match strategy. If you don't have any pawn breaks, just try and grab one. and Take a pawn. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I don't see any reason not How to do that. How can she get it back? She can't get it back, can she? I well, mean, she's not losing like B4, but she's losing B4. B7 as well. I don't know. Yeah. It doesn't look... It's not obvious to me. Well, Keddie's gone F5. Wow. Yeah. Okay. Well, I mean, that's a very interesting move because she's trying to encourage White to take and finally... Yeah. Give that bishop on g7 some life. So if it takes. Obviously some. Um, bishop takes, presumably. Takes, I thought maybe possibly queen takes or. Queen takes? I don't know. Or possibly rook takes. I thought queen takes hits b2. That was the advantage of it. And yeah. Yeah. I mean, black's created new weaknesses as well, but, you know, you could, it's, it, white's weaknesses look more kind of. More of an issue than they did before. Mm. Okay. Interesting. Yeah, F5 is an interesting move, isn't it? It's a very interesting move because I think, you know, it's an opportunity to drive that rook back. Yeah. On the other hand, you know, E6 is now weaker than it was before. Yeah. So white does not have to take. White doesn't have to. Well, I assume white doesn't have to take. If white did have to take, then I think F5 would be obviously a good move. But I assume she can play. I assume he can play rookie two or something like that. Yeah. So, what did he? Oh, is this the position? He hasn't moved. Yeah. Yet. So they're up to when Ketty's just played F5. Okay. Oh, okay. So now rook, rookie two apparently helps. So I mean, presumably something to do with queen b4 and the counter with c4 being weaker than it is with the rook on. Mm. Okay. Well, I like f5 just from a yeah. sort of practical point of view because for starts, it's not obvious to me what white should do and if it's not obvious then you you kind of create those dilemmas and i'll tell you one other big bonus point about f5 it answers kevin's question on why ketty hasn't developed her f8 <laughs> rook that's right that's extraordinary foresight from ketty <laughs> um yeah okay i mean maybe he maybe he does have to open up the bishop maybe maybe the e6 pawn is weak enough that he can look at he takes f6 but Okay, either neither of them look like a an easy, straightforward choice. So I like f five just from a sort of combative point of view. Yeah, good stuff. Okay, let's hop back to. I want to see what's happening in Connor um, against David. 
Oh. Hello, it's simplified a lot. It has. So where did we get Black to? Is we, were, up. we were around here. So uh, rookie two, we were looking at knight f4, David chose ef3. Okay. Knight f3, six, two. Yes, and we were looking at this. Oh, this this the engine doesn't like is is it possible that that can't go knight takes b2 here can he i'd seen this knight takes b2 and bishop takes c3 tactic in some other he position. does he does play it the knight on a1 is so bad aha uh -huh. yeah. surprised, surprised he allowed that because before it didn't work for some other reason there was too much other stuff going on so why does it work here though let's have a look so if if white did black bishops are so awesome they stopped the rook from defending the knight Quite simply. Yeah, I see. So just takes. Just takes. And no way to coordinate these yeah. old systems. No. And you can't even defend the rook with anything. Either. No, exactly. Yeah, there's no way to. Literally nothing. Hold it at all. Okay. So that is really nice. So knight b2. Um, a nice... Yeah, I, mean, I don't know whether in principle David was right to keep the position more simple, you know, avoid all that heavy tactical stuff and just keep the bishop there. But, you know, the if white. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, he might have been angling for exactly this, mightn't he? Well, it's yeah, I just kind of expected White to... I mean, I assume White could have done something about it. Mm. But maybe White couldn't do anything very convenient about it, in which case the positional advantage is bigger than I realised. Anyway... Yeah, because it's actually only... It's not, not many moves since that. No, it's very very short number of moves after he, he rejected... It's only two moves combat. later. Yeah. Yeah. No, I just... The, the rook's on the default. So it went here... Takes, takes and just bishop f6 bishop f6 yeah so i mean it feels like there must be some better move here so if you go because that presumably is already threatening i would i i was assuming so i hadn't even checked but i i mean rook d2 looks like the move of somebody who hasn't seen knight takes b2 to me yeah I'm sure you must be able to do something yeah i'm just wondering if you go ah oh, bishop c2 probably does that help just trying to coordinate the pieces a little bit. Yeah. I mean, knight f4 forces rook f2, but I'm not sure that's the end of the world. Um, and I'm not sure if anything else is either. Oh, sorry, it doesn't force rook f2. I can go back to e1. Sorry, I, I forgot for a moment yeah. that my bishop has defended twice. Yeah. This looks like a slightly tougher try because at least yeah. we've stopped knight. Well, if knight b2, at the very least, we have bishop takes f5. And it's more complicated than the game. Actually, that might just be worth checking. It Can, can black play knight takes b2 here, bishop takes f5, rook d1 check? I didn't really think about that before, but I just wonder if it's possible. Yeah. So king here. But at the very least, you know, with the doubled isolated f point or whatever, there's going to be more mess, isn't there? So takes on... Mm, probably... No, I think we might need to take on... Oh, if we take on g5. Okay, yeah, we're g2. threatening... Yeah, I've got to get rid of that one. Some stuff. Because we're threatening both knight on a1 and... Um, yeah, but at least, you know, I can two. take... I can play knight d4. I don't know. It feels like white's still fighting here in a way yeah. that he's not... Yeah necessarily after knight takes b2 in the game but okay well so, i mean it's a nice tactic it's a very mm. unusual tactic you know to have white quite that helpless just because of those people talk about how those two bisps are always good lined up on adjacent diagonals that's mm. an example of it for coaches take note <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's probably the best take. Response. okay again he's being quite pragmatic about kind of simplifying his advantages when yeah rushes is it rushes so in how do you think yeah. this just with knight c2 yes knight f4 yeah was that threatening i wonder if knight c5 bishop c2 isn't it bishop c2 and then ah, it threatens the old ball. forking trick it does yes it? the old trick so king f2 stopping it indeed yeah it's annoying when you set up tricks and your mm -hmm. opponent's most natural move covers them but <laughs> and 96 okay 
I think after knight e6, he was probably threatening knight c5 using the pin. But again, it was the same thing where your opponent's most natural move covers the yeah. <laughs> covers the threat. Knight c7. I'm not sure I like knight c7 very much. Feels like white's. Yeah. yeah, I don't know if I can play rook e7 threatening a discovered check already. Don't know. Just knight c7 looks like it. Could end up being something you regretted if White can push the D pawn and oh, I don't know. You know, because then if D five, I can go Knight C five check and maybe support it with B six. I don't know. Mm. May not. It's probably a pretty fine detail anyway. Yeah, Knight C seven, Knight B four. Oh, that's a funny move. I thought he was going to go. Oh, sorry, he can't go d5 because the bishop takes c2. That's the point. Yeah, and sorry, knight c7 really would be a funny move if you could just go d5. But Okay, and one of the defenders has to... One of the defenders capture. is being dragged away. Sorry, sorry. It's the heat. Yeah. Heat, he claimed. <laughs> no, I so it's harder to calculate. Definitely. It is harder to calculate. Much it? harder. Um, um, yeah, knight b4. Okay. It looks slightly odd, but I guess it does sort of. I'm not even sure that threatens. <coughs> He's just moving it out of the way, I guess, so, so the defenders don't get diverted. A5. Yeah, that's the move that made me think knight b4 was a good Ah, oh, okay, so he's headed for c5 if he can get it. Or e5. Okay. And that's where we are. So a reminder, David needs to win this game. David playing black um, for his GM norm from this tournament. We have been told. Yes. Um, can I just check something a moment? Oh, okay. Yeah. No, it's okay. I was about to blunder something. <laughs> it's still the heat. Okay, so I mean, I think that I'm not sure whose position has improved over the last few moves, but in practical terms, I would have thought black needs to find something good now, otherwise it feels like white's position has improved slightly. I mean, black should still have very good winning chances, but it's not easy, especially when you're getting a bit nervous. Okay, we're going to need to wrap up in just a moment. So what we'll do, we'll just like have a, just um, sort of look at the game without going through moves. Yes. Um Look at this Let's one. Do a quick summary. Yeah. So this one we didn't look at. Oh wow, this one. I was going to say, if, if this is one we looked at, it's changed an awful lot. <laughs> <laughs> we clearly didn't. Yeah. This is Jonah against Salah. Um, okay, does, can does White have a tactic here? Can you play B four? Okay. And if. Uh, maybe not. So I was thinking if takes, then rook a8 check, king d7, knight e5 check, trying to deflect the knight. But actually, that's hideously ugly. There's going to be all kinds of horrors. No, 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 that's ridiculous. Don't even look at it. But b4 might not be a silly move because it opens the a-fold, but it's a bit of an ugly word. It's a very odd position. It's difficult to... Mm. I sort of feel like white's got... Well, that knight on c6 is a bit of a beauty. Yes. Yeah, but... yeah, yeah, yeah. So at some point... Jonah will probably try B4 and opening up this A file. And, yeah. yeah, unless he unless he dislikes those weaknesses. Yeah, B4 doesn't seem like a silly move in principle. There is Bishop D3 to contend with, possibly. Oh, wait a sec. What I was saying isn't so silly. B4 <coughs> takes check, King D7, there's Rook takes F7 check to consider as well. I think, again, it's not right because Black can just go King D6 and it all holds together, but it's worth just seeing that it all holds together. So, I mean, not there. Sorry? What? Oh, take. Yeah, take so black has to go king d6. Yeah, the rook is covered. No, no, I was going to take on f7 check, but then king d6. And actually, white's just overextending his position because you're going to get some position where the black d pawn's powerful at the end. But right. yeah, I'm just illustrating really what white shouldn't do. Okay. <laughs> what might look a bit tempting if you were just, if for some reason, despite playing the position, you'd only just started looking at it. <laughs> okay. Fine. So, yeah, White can't lunge straight in, but I sort of, I don't know. I mean, Zala's putting up tough resistance, I think. And let's check in on this one again. Um, Oof. 
Well, it's very much as before. Well, it doesn't where, really have any run. attacking. I think it's a matter of time before Black's attack does something nasty. Bishop A6 is a nice sort of mix of positional and oh, this is so. This is how he gets his extra open file. Yeah. So he's yes, he's got this A yeah. and B file. Basically, you're trying to go Rook A8 and Rook takes A2, which will mate in some. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's going to be pretty unpleasant for Tim, I think. Yeah. Okay. So if Ravi does go ahead and win this game, he will he will be ahead in the tournament. He will win the tournament. Yes. Uh, also, half... I mean, you know, even when you're a GM, yeah, beating the GM norm by half a point is something. Yeah, to, yeah, yeah. Be, really, you know, we know really already that's going to be an awful lot of rating points gained. Really that is impressive. Really yeah. good so performance. He's, you know, what, he's gained. What? Let's see. Can I just see that? Gained thirteen. Yeah, I mean. This field, yeah. What I like, Ravi doesn't seem to have had that. Quite a lot of players when they when they've been aiming to make the GM title and then they make it, they have a little dip because they, I don't know, they suffer a slight lack of motivation. I think it's very good for Ravi that he's playing for us in the Olympiad, mm. and yeah. therefore, you know, I think that probably has helped to keep his motivation very high. And he just hasn't had this kind of dip. He's looked very, very, uh, very convincing since making making his title. I mean, mm. maybe he hasn't pushed his rating up much from where he was, but. He's more, you know, he made a huge leap and he's easily consolidated it. And now he's doing the push up again. Yeah. I think, you know, yeah. we've got this this England team with, which isn't particularly young, but the the players are staying incredibly strong for their age. But it's nice to have this one youngster breaking through as well. Mm. And and you can see in this tournament, there's lots of yeah. You can see quite how good he is. Lots of bets, and you can see here again. I mean, yeah. every time I see him play, I'm I'm struck by. Try out spanner. Ravi hasn't developed his rook on f8. A good point. A Naughty good point. Ravi. I think it, its first move might be checkmate. <laughs> when it, when it, does, <coughs> it might develop with checkmate. Therefore, yes, develop your rook with checkmate. That's the way to do it. Oh, what, like if a rook a8, rook a Yeah, from rook a8, a2. I mean, for the moment, there's always yeah, nice yeah. a3, but there might not be forever. You yeah. can easily imagine a scenario where its first move might be mate. Sounds good. Well, sounds good if you're not Tim. If you're not Tim. To Try not to sound him. too gleeful. No, 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 no. I'm just, just was thinking. But it could be nasty, yeah. Um, Yeah, okay. Right. We do need to wrap up, don't we, Tim? Uh, Tim? Uh, Tim. Oh, God. Peter, Peter, <laughs> Peter we need to wrap that up. That must be the heat, I think. Yeah. That is the heat. Um, okay, so uh, it's been a really fantastic tournament. Um, Ravi is looks like he'll convert this game and he'll uh, he'll be he'll win. Um, David also has been having an exceptional tournament. He has gained look fifty four rating. Points. No, he's had an un unbelievable time and good luck. Good luck Very good luck on this game. this last game because this he needs this for the grandmaster. We like to be as unbiased as possible, apart from when people are going for norms. Right? Yeah, no, we're biased when with when the norms possible, but then yes, yes, exactly. exactly. Um, and yeah, um, it's been excellent opportunity. Lovely to see Daniel Fernandez playing, Marcus Harvey, um, and all of these players. Um, Indeed. It's always good to see Ketty Jonah well. and Ketty. Ketty and yeah, really, really nice. Um, and uh, we need to thank the sponsors, which I've got written down. There was four different sponsors, and I'm going to try and do it from memory now, which is always a bad idea. Which was the international director. It was the John Robinsons Trust, the Friends of Chess, and uh, also Lawrence Cooper, who has done over. Many, many years he's done um, really good things for English chess. Um, he's organising this tournament here. It was also his birthday the other day. Ah, oh, there you are in the chat, Loz. Um, even the organiser is struggling to remain neutral in David's game, <laughs> which is Loz. So, yeah. Um, so, yeah, great to that, that you've organised this tournament, Loz. Um, really nice guy. Uh, yeah, he's done loads of things for me. Personally, I've played in this team lots of times. Um and yeah, tournaments like this, very great for English chess, lots of opportunities. So um, big thank you. Uh, thanks, Peter, as well, and Matthew for commentary and also to all the organisers. Um, OK, I hope we've covered that. Up. No, no, we haven't covered it all off because thanks to everybody who's been watching and for thank everybody you. in the chat. Uh, really nice to see you. Um, thanks all. Thanks very much for watching. And thanks, Natasha. <laughs> great job. Thank you.